Hi everyone, I'm Chris. If you're new to my channel, I'd like to say welcome. If you're a returning viewer, I would like to say thank you for um, subscribing, for liking, for commenting. Uh, I appreciate each and every one of you. I was even thinking today about how um, this floss tube community, I know everybody talks about how amazing it is, but I've really found that it it really enhances my stitching life. You know, I, I, you know, through this community, I receive encouragement and advice, uh, um, inspiration and uh, motivation. So, and that's because of all of you guys. So thank you. I really appreciate that. Um, so if you've been here before, or if not, um, I often start out my video with um, showing you something that I've stitched in the past. It's usually something back when I started stitching back in the late 1990s, um, early 2000s, and then I kind of got away from stitching and I've come back again. So sometimes I like to show some of those older projects, but this segment is kind of self-limiting because eventually I'm going to run out of those projects because I didn't, I didn't do a whole lot of stitching and a lot of the things I did stitch I gave away, but until I run out of things I'll do this and then maybe I'll change it and just show you um, do some flip through so through some of the older uh, cross stitch magazines I still have or something like that but so in my first video um, I showed you a stocking that I had made this is one of the first things that I um, cross stitched and this was for my oldest daughter at the time um, and I made her this stocking so um, if you remember I've mentioned I actually have two daughters so of course when daughter number two came along I had to make a stocking for her as well and they're actually both out of this um, magazine this cross stitch Christmas magazine from it'll be 1990 something I forget I don't see the the date on here but um, so yes that the one with the woodland animals is in here but this was the other one that um, I did for my second daughter So that is her stocking there. So that was for Claudia. Now, probably like a lot of you with children, if you've made stockings for them, you usually start when they're, usually start when they're fairly small. Um, and what I found, although this is a beautiful, beautiful stocking, um, as my daughter grew, I realized it did not suit her temperament, personality, or color palette. <laughs> um, she has always been a bit of a tomboy. Uh, she, well, both my daughters love animals, but my youngest daughter, Claudia, um, loves all animals, all creatures, and is very interested in that. So in hindsight, this probably would have been a better stock, <laughs> stocking for her, but you know, what are you going to do type of thing? But anyway, so those those are my stockings that I've made for my daughters. I'm toying around with the idea of making them for my husband and I, and I'll show you a little bit more about that um, afterwards. But So um, let's move on. I do have a couple of finishes since I last saw you. Um, one was actually a start and a finish. So I think I had shown I had... Um, purchased this Mill Hill kit and this was my first Mill Hill. I'd never done one before and I got to tell you I uh, I was a little bit worried about the beading because I thought it might be challenging or tricky or frustrating but it was fun like I I really uh, I really enjoy doing it so um, here's a little sleigh then probably took me about a week to complete it from start to finish and on the day I finished it I went online and ordered I ordered some more because I had so much fun so um, I'll show you one of those um, here shortly so um, the other one that I had been working on uh, that I showed you last time was this Lizzie Kate um, Four Seasons and this was the autumn one that I was working on and um, I did finish it as well and I'm really happy with how it turned out. I still haven't decided 
exactly how I'm going to finish these. I'm looking for inspiration, so feel free to comment if you have any good ideas or something you've done in the past. Um, I'm even deciding if I'm going to stitch all four of them before I decide, but I kind of did the autumn one because I wanted to put it up because it's fall. So I have to think about that a little bit more. So those are the two things that I've completed. I have been working on um, some other projects. So I believe the, um, the last time I showed you, this is my oldest uh, whip, my oldest work in progress, called Kindred Spirits. Um, it's what they call an enhanced, an embellished cross stitch is what it says up at the top here. And I noticed afterwards, quick and easy. I started this 20 years ago. If it was easy, I think I would have been done. If it was quick, I think I would have been done. I don't think it's quick or easy, but hey, that's just me. Um, the other interesting thing, I guess, too, that I found um, through watching Floss Tube is I've received this accelerated uh, education. So if I was to start this now, which I probably wouldn't start it now, um, you can stitch as much or as little as you want. But back then, I, they sort of said, you stitch this, so I stitched it kind of thing. But that's sort of where I've gotten a little bit hung up. Um, so you can see, I kind of did part of the horse, but then that was getting a little bit challenging. And I think I finally just decided I was going to go to that top left corner and start at the top and work my way down. Um, again, I just find it hard to decide where to stitch because it's not like counter cross stitch you're sort of just looking at the pattern and trying to line up what's on the pattern with the coloring on the canvas and I don't know for me that's just a challenge so but I really I do really like the image and it's something I bought to give to my sister um, so I still really would like to try and finish it um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take inspiration from Michelle at Mitch Stitch she was saying in one of her last videos that um, she's pulling some of her larger projects out on the weekends to try and get some progress on those. So I'm going to try and do that as well on Saturdays and or Sundays. Um, I'm going to try and bring this project out so I can keep working away at it and try and get it finished. In an ideal world, I would love to have it finished by Christmas so it's done and I can give it to her and move on from there. But that's maybe being a little, little optimistic. So... The other thing I've been working on, so we were talking about stockings, and I was thinking about doing stockings for my husband and I. So this is a pattern, uh, a gold collection, I guess it's out of Dimensions, called the North Wind. Um, yes, it's a Dimensions there down at the bottom. Uh, and I bought this thinking I might do it for my husband, but as I'm looking at it, I'm thinking now again this is something my younger daughter might appreciate more than all the angels so I might even ask you know I might even talk to her and just tell her to be honest with me um, because she doesn't use that stocking that I cross stitched and I'm okay with that um, she just uses one from her childhood that's sort of a fuzzy furry red and white one with an animal head on it or something um, and yeah if she really doesn't like that one I stitched I'm stitching this one anyway so if she really likes this one better, I might just put her name on this one and make this her stocking. And I don't have a problem with, um, I don't think it would be hard to um, undo some of the stitching and lining of that stocking, which I'm not completely thrilled with anyway, and take her name out and maybe maybe someday I'll have a granddaughter and I could make the stocking for her. So, But we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens there. So... This is how much I have on this, and again, I apologize for all of my dangling threads, but this was my first attempt at teaching myself to park. So I haven't stitched on this for a little while, but again, I would like to get back to it. So I kind of started in the middle, which is the polar bear. So it's sort of the top of his head, and I worked my way up to the corner. <laughs> The other thing I noticed about this when I was looking at it just today, this stocking 
lays in the opposite direction to the other two stockings. I don't know if that's going to bother me if they're all hanging together on the mantle. I'll have to make sure if I do a fourth one for myself that it goes the same way as this one so that they're balanced. But anyway. <laughs> so that is my Christmas stocking. Um, and I apologize. I'm really bad for saying what fabric these are on. This is done on an 18 count Ada. And there's some half stitches and some sorry, some half stitches and some full cross crosses done with the thread that came in the kit. You can see the owl up there at the top that I'm starting to do. The other one I've been working probably the most on is this Clouds Factory Game of Thrones alphabet. And I'm doing this. My youngest daughter is a big fan of the Game of Thrones TV series. So that is where I'm at with that. I'm going by pages, so that's why there's only half of <laughs> a few people there. But I'm just coming to that page to finish them off. But, so yeah, these are fun to do because they're fairly good, decent blocks of color, and each character is like a mini finish. So I, um, I'm even thinking down the road, Clouds Factory has, you know, a couple of other smaller Game of Thrones pieces, and um, I thought it might be fun to make those kind of as companion pieces, so she could sort of have a little collage of three of the three of the patterns hanging together, but. We'll see. Always so much. Always so much to stitch. Not enough time. Um, so those are the things I've been working on right now. Um, the other thing I have coming up that I'm doing a little bit of planning for, uh, Buckeye Stitcher and Ginger Gerald Stitcher are hosting a stitch along beginning on October the 1st. And it's a, it's a hedgehog stitch along. So I thought that would be kind of fun. They are both doing a Riolis pattern. Uh, with I think a couple of little hedgehogs on it uh, and so I went online to look to see what all was available and I did debate getting the same one they're doing but I came across one that's a little bit different and I've seen um, these patterns before on Etsy and I always thought they were quite striking and thought they looked really fun to stitch so I decided I was gonna take a little bit different tact and uh, I was gonna do this mandala hedgehog. So this designer is Awesome Patterns Studio and she has um, over a thousand patterns on Etsy and they're all vibrant um, bright colors. There's a lot of these um, mandala type animals but she also has like state parks, she has some Disney characters like, so there, there's all kinds of really um, interesting stuff. So I'd recommend if you like modern cross stitch that um, this would be a good uh, site to go to on Etsy just to see what all she has. So my dilemma is I do really like, obviously I really like this pattern. It's very striking and that's what drew me to it. And I do like these colors, but they're not what I would consider my colors. And I do want to complete this and hang it somewhere in my home. Uh, I'm not sure whether I'll do it in a hoop or if I'll do it in a frame. But those colors also are not the kind of colors that I, de I decorate with. So I was considering changing them to, you know, more blues and greens and browns and tans type of thing, maybe even some grays. But to be honest, <laughs> I sat down twice now and I've looked at the pattern and I've looked at the colors and I even like took a bunch of my favorite colors out of my DMC floss collection and started trying to go figure out okay which would I substitute for which color and it's kind of overwhelming because each little spiky thing on the hedgehog is at least two colors if not more so you have to be conscious of 
not just the base color, but the accent color. And you might pick them for one area, but then that accent in another area might not look as good with the base color that you're picking for that. So I don't know if anybody has any tips for doing this. I had thought about going back on her site and looking for another mandala, but in the color palette that appeals to me more and maybe even purchasing it and then trying to substitute the colors, but I don't know if that's not a good way to do it. I did think about maybe just start stitching it and change the colors as I go, but to be honest, that might be kind of stressful for me because having to make all those decisions is what um, sometimes makes me freeze up a little, well, not freeze up, but, but you know, makes me go, okay, I'll do that later because that's too many decisions I can't decide right now. But, uh, but yeah, so again, I would appreciate anybody's advice. If you have any tips for doing color conversions, if you've ever done anything like that, whether you think I should just do it the way it is, whether, uh, you know, I should just commit, you know, a couple of hours to sit down and go through color by color and double checking to see, because I can do that. Uh, I just didn't know if somebody had an easier way to do it or not. But anyway, I'm really excited about doing this stitch long. I've never technically done one before. I know I'm doing the Joyful World, which is still considered a stitch along, but it's from a couple years ago, so I don't really feel like I'm in with a group of people all stitching together because most people that have done it have already completed it. But uh, so yeah, so this is going to be this is going to be fun, and I am really looking forward to doing uh, that particular type of uh, pattern because I've never done anything like that before. So, so as I say, if you have any advice, feel free to make comments down below. I'd appreciate anything that. Uh, any advice anybody has to give uh, to, to do that color conversion. So that's kind of it for stuff I've been working on, stuff I finished. Um, I did have a few purchases that I was telling you about. Um, and one of them I have actually started already. So you'll know that I mentioned the Mill Hill kits, that I really enjoyed those. So I did put in a purchase and here is one of the kits I decided to get. I thought fall, Halloween's coming. I just really like the colors in this um, pattern and to be honest, the, the camera on my iPad isn't really showing them quite as bright and vibrant as they are. but. Anyway, and of course there's a little kitty there, so I love that. So I have started this, but I don't have a tremendous amount done. <laughs> Probably. So this is kind of the this is the kitty, and that's part of the all the pretty purpley turquoisey, and this is the tree up the one side that I'm just doing, but so this is my first time stitching on black. So that was interesting because I started in the middle, which is this gray color on the black. And to be honest, my eyes were having trouble focusing. I do have a magnifying or a lighted magnifier, I guess is, is what you would call it. So I was having trouble when I was looking through the magnifier to get my eyes to focus because of the, the black and then the dark thread on the black. And, you know, I guess my eyes were trying to decide where to focus or focus through the holes in the in the perforated paper but it was a lot better with the with the uh, brighter colored gloss so so I don't know if this might be one that I can only do in short blocks of time because of the strain it might put on my eyes but we'll see anyway I am really uh, enjoying enjoying that and the beads that come with this are just beautiful and again the camera doesn't show you this sparkly Glitter, glittery, <laughs> glitteriness of them. But yeah, there's all kinds of like magentas and purples and silvers, and then of course all of the the classic orange and black and purple in this one. So that's going to be really fun putting those beads on. So stay tuned. Um, I did have. A Few other things I purchased but I'll save those until another time um, to show you some of that stuff but uh, but yeah I think that's all I'm gonna talk about too much today I 
I will do a little bit of a shout out. I thought it would be fun today to do a shout out to some of the guy stitchers out there. I know probably most of you know of all of them and are subscribed and watch their videos anyway, but on the off chance, maybe if somebody's new and they haven't uh, watched any of their videos, I thought I would just uh, mention them because uh, it is fun to have uh, some some male stitchers and get their perspective on things and see the types of projects they like to work on how they like to finish their projects their process I find really interesting so uh, the first one I thought I would mention is Garrett who is coffee stitcher I know Garrett's been a member of the community for a long time and I'm actually still I started his videos at the beginning and I'm working my way through so um, he's got lots of videos but he's an incredibly creative person so uh, so Coffee Stitcher, you should check him out if you haven't. Uh, and of course I mentioned already Ginger Gerald Stitcher. Love uh, watching G uh, Gerald's videos and uh, his projects. He's a, such an incredible stitcher and uh, he tends to do larger architecture based projects but they all they look amazing. So, so check out Gerald, Ginger Gerald Stitcher. Um, and then Brian who is Blitz Stitch Again, he's been a part of the community for quite a while, and um, again, he's a, a, an incredible stitcher, and like Gerald, tends to do larger projects, architecture-based projects, and um, he he's uh, very analytical, if that's the correct way to describe it, but he's he does... Um, charts to sort of track his stitching, how much stitching he's doing and he compares from month to month and that's really interesting to see uh, how he does that and it's a tangible way to kind of measure your progress so, so that's really cool to see. And then one other uh, male stitcher that I've been watching is Philip. His channel is Pip, P-I-P Stitch and uh, he's over in the UK. And I know one of the first projects I saw him working on was his Hade, and I'm not sure who the artist is, but it's the Country Mouse, City Mouse story type thing. And I was able to sort of watch his progress, basically from start to finish. I can't remember if I started watching right at the very beginning, but, but seeing him finish it, and then he got it framed, and it, it was beautiful. like. It, w it was amazing to see, like, uh, I, I was just enthralled when he showed the finished project. It just looked so beautiful. So, so those are four of um, the male stitchers on FossTube that I watch. I know there's more, so if you have any favorites, feel free to, to mention them down below because um, I'd love to check out more. And, uh, and yeah, if, if you haven't watched any of those guys, you should go check them out. Um, so yeah, I think the last thing, the last segment that I like to do is to show you um, another craft that I've done. My, my channel name is Craft and Chris, so over the years I've done a number of different crafts. Uh, one of the ones that, I don't know if I could say it took me away from cross stitching, but I know it was the one I sort of became obsessed with after I sort of learned to cross stitch was scrapbooking. And that was back in the early 2000s type of thing when scrapbooking kind of I think took off a little bit. Uh, so I, yeah, I've done some scrapbooking over the years. I don't tend to do as much as I used to. I'm also maybe a little bit different in my scrapbooking because I know some people um, will take all of their photos and you know scrapbook everything, you know, birthdays, holidays, family trips, you know, that type of thing. And I admire those people because I think that takes dedication and you have to be, um, you know, it's, it's hard not to get way behind and get overwhelmed and not want to do it. But I kind of wanted to cross, I, I kind of wanted to scrapbook to document, sure, some of those events, but more to showcase some of my favorite photos or to tell certain stories or to try different techniques and kind of used it as a creative outlet and um, to create more 
artistic type things as opposed to just documenting stuff. So I don't have all of my photos put in scrapbooks. I don't have every birthday put in scrapbooks. In fact, I have very, I have very few birthdays. Uh, but I just have some photos, usually of my kids or my pets. Uh, that again, I just really like the photos and wanted to showcase those. So uh, I thought I would just show you a couple. This is um, my album for my youngest daughter, kind of theme focusing on Claudia today. So I just sort of made this little tag. Did these with rubber stamps. Um, and so this has a bunch of pages that I had done for her. So um, this is a fun one that I did. So I, I do a lot of rubber stamping. I was a stamping up demonstrator for a number of years. So this page, it kind of starts with the you are up there in the corner. So the heart is, you know, that symbolizing you are loved and you are beautiful. You are seven because she was seven when I did this. And you are Claudia because that's her name. And then um, in this little picture here in this corner, I stamp, um, used a stamp to do dates and years. And I just circled the month and the year that I did the scrapbook page. So that was, that was fun. Um, this was another one that I did of both of the girls, so the title was Sisters, and I found this really sweet poem that I thought really summed up my daughter's um, personalities and relationships, and I'll just read it to you. It says, I have a daughter made of silk and gossamer and such. Her sister is a muslin child and sturdy to the touch. As homespun is, as warm as dear, beloved both this much, they've taught me silken butterfly and merry muslin moth, that silken muslin woven together make a lovely cloth. And that does kind of, my older daughter Rebecca is um, a little more of a girly girl to some extent. Um, and Claudia, my younger daughter, is the tomboy. So I thought that combination of silk and muslin kind of was a good description of the two of them. So, so that's a one that I did. And then I'll just show you one more. Um, this is one of my favorites just because this was a really fun technique to do. And I really love the colors of these papers that I, use, I, I have found and was able to use. So basically you're just making three by three squares in a pattern papers that coordinate together and I inked all the edges and then I had these photos I had taken trying to get some photos of my girls with my mom and Claudia's always a little bit of a ham and she never liked really having her picture taken so I got I was getting all kinds of funny faces from her so I thought it would be fun to just put those all together in a